So in this video, we'll deploy a set of Python-based serverless functions in AWS. And then we will attach those functions to the HTTP endpoints using API Gateway. Now, it's not quite Flask. It's a, a, a tongue-in-cheek call it Flasky or Flask-like. And at the end of the day, we're going to implement a identical API. The implementation is a little bit different, but the API itself to the caller looks exactly the same. And it's the same one we're going to use in the autoscaling project. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to do the following tasks using Terraform and scripts provided in this project. The first one is going to be to deploy, deploy Python code as AWS Lambdas. That code will leverage the document DynamoDB, which is the cloud uh, native document database that AWS, AWS provides. Then we will configure HTTP endpoints using API Gateway to invoke those serverless functions with an HTTP trigger. Then we'll secure those HTTP endpoints. The first time we go through, we're going to implement them without any security, so they're open to the internet. And then we're going to add IAM security, then use Postman to show you, show you how you interact with the API once you've applied the these cloud native security. And at the end, we'll destroy everything so you're good stewards of your uh, account. So let's talk about serverless. Uh, serverless has got some attributes here that, you know, serverless sounds like a misnomer almost. Uh, there are servers, it's just you don't manage them. So serverless kind of, you know, at a surface level implies no service, but it's apply implying that you don't manage the servers that AWS does. And what that gives you is auto scaling. All those rules we talked about, the 60%, it handles it all for you on the back end. Um, most of these things are containerized, so it's just spinning up new versions of the containers to handle the load. But you don't worry about it, it handles it. And the second is it's pay as you go. This is the smallest and cheapest amount of compute you can buy from AWS. A Lambda is essentially a little bit of code. We're going to use Python. And you give AWS the code, and it invokes it on your behalf when you define what the triggers are. Now, we're going to use HTTP Gateway. That's for HTTP endpoints. But there's step functions. There's stream processing. There's uh, events in AWS. There's many different ways that Lambdas can be triggered. But HTTP is, is the scenario we're going to cover here. So, um, you know, you have the gateway, which uh, actually routes the HTTP. And then the lambdas are the actual kind of atomic level functions that get created. So here is the diagram of what we're this project is going to build. You've got the Flasky API, and in it, it has four routes defined to two four lambdas. We have the good to go route, the candidates, the candidate get, and a candidate post. And it is interacting with the DynamoDB to store the, the names. It's a very simple application, but it just demonstrates, uh, you know, endpoints and storing a little bit of data and getting it out. So there are some prerequisites to this project. You obviously need an AWS account. You need to have the AWS CLI installed, and you need to have the latest Terraform. And then to do the testing, you're going to want to use Postman, so you need to install Postman. If this is your first time doing a project with us, you might want to take this point to go and do the AWS and Terraform easy setup. All our projects follow the same sort of setup and guidelines and, and code structure. So that's a good thing to go look at if you've never done one of these. So I'm assuming at this point, all these prerequisites are done. So I'm going to flip over to my AWS uh, development environment. And which is a Ubuntu uh, shell environment. And I'm going to copy this code here and I'm going to put it in here. And that is going to download the code and put it in the, um, in the directory. So there's a script and all I know is just check ENV. And that will make sure that you have a, everything's installed and you have a connection. The one thing that's unique on this is I do require zip in there, but most people have that installed. But if you don't, you need to install zip. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to fire off the build. So I'm going to do apply sh. And while that's working, we'll go back to the readme. And let's talk about the build process. 
Um, there's really two distinct phases. The first one is we package up the Python code in a zip file. Now what we do to detect changes is we use a checksum in the zip file, uh, and that's referenced in the Terraform configuration. This ensures, and you'll see this when we make some changes, that when you run it the second time, the Python code, the checksum will be different. If you modify the code, because the zip file will be different, that will trigger a redeployment when you run apply again. The second phase is going to take that zip file and deploy the Lambda functions in the API gateway. And at the very end, you're going to want to run validate and validate will validate the solution and uh, make sure that uh, everything is working as expected. So what we're going to do now is we are going to go and go to AWS console. And what we're going to do is we are going to go to API gateway on the API gateway. And that shows me my routes. So you got name and it parses the stuff out for you. Then you have uh, integrations and you can see the, these endpoints are attached to lambdas. So now let's go to uh, lambdas and click on that. And you'll see the various functions. Um, so they're all Python code. So you can click in here and it'll give you a very simple way to test your code. And what I'm going to do is show you just a quick change. I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to poke that into the browser. And you're going to see modified or yeah, connected true and then the host name. So I'm going to go into the flash functions here and I'm going to accept and I am going to change the code and say modify connected and I'm going to say deploy and then when I go over here and hit refresh it sure should modify so I can update these you know just simple little debugging things you you can you can do that within here. It's It's got a sort of an instance of Visual Studio code. I don't recommend developing code in the console. Uh, there's Visual Studio uh, plugins that allow you to test things. That's the way you should go. But if you just need a quick and dirty, hey, let me see if I change this. Um, you can do that within the uh, console here. To look at the endpoints. So let's go back to this guy here. And let's bring up Postman. Bring up Postman and put in the API. And you can see it's got that modified because I haven't changed it back. And I'm going to say candidates. And then candidate John Smith. And then everybody loves a homie. So I'm going to put a homie in there. And so we've, we've exercised all four inputs. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to secure all those were open on the internet. Anybody can do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this variables.tf file and I'm going to say what type of authorization to use. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to say to zero one lambdas and go to code, actually not code, it's variables nano variables and turn that off and comment that out. So once I've done that, you want to go back up to the main directory because that's where apply works. And I'm going to do apply.sh. And what it's going to do is going to, it's going to wipe out that modified change, of course, because it's not in my code repository. And it's going to go through and it's going to authorize the thing. So we will wait for the build. Okay, it actually took a little bit longer to uh, turn on security than the initial build, which is a little surprising. But you see, it's it's now got access key and secret fee applied, and all the things now return forbidden. So if I go back to this guy right here, it's just going to say message forbidden. Um, so what we want to do is we want to do um, we want to go to the Lambda code. And we need to get this. What happened was when I turned that on 
an IAM user was created with a secret access key that we need to use for Postman now. So what I'm going to do is uh, go back to in here and it's going to give you the command you need to put in here. Um, form output JSON. So I'm going to go do that and it's going to give you your access key and secret key. Now this is, as soon as I destroy this project, this is going to go away and it only has access to the actual function, the way the Terraform is written. So uh, you, you, you can't do anything with these keys, so don't get excited. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Postman and I'm going to go back to Git and do GTG details equals true. And it's going to say forbidden. So how do we do it now? Well, you go to the authorization tab and there's a convenient um, AWS signature. And so what I do is I go in and I copy that guy here, put it in Postman, then copy the other guy and put it in Postman. And now when I do the send, it's back, it's working. So now I can call all my APIs. I can do uh, candidates like I did before. And it, it now works. Now, if you go look at the header, it's really ugly. Um, I mean, it's it's huge. Um, and this bearer token is only good for a certain amount of time. So you you would do use there, there's toolkits that you can provide. Um, like it does with the authorization tab, but there's toolkits if you're going to call it from your code where you can generate these headers. And so that's how you would secure this API using IAM authentication. Now, in, in the grand scheme of things, you're probably going to use OAuth uh, in some capacity for these APIs, either using a service token or a user token. And now it's time to destroy the project. So um, that's it for the AWS solution. I'm going to go ahead and destroy. Shouldn't take too long. AWS specific things. Um, the, the lambdas, I had to split them into multiple files. I think there's a way to. I, I didn't do a lot of research on how to con, how to consolidate it into one file. Each one has a lambda handler. Uh, the other cloud providers have had like version one and version two of their serverless thing. It seems like uh, Amazon hasn't evolved quite the same. Um, there's big differences in the other cloud providers between version one and version two. Uh, so, you know, the other thing is the, the languages that get supported, um, you know, it can supports Python, um, Go, I don't think it does PHP, but there, there's a whole list of providers that are in the, in the main, uh, the introductory section. But the key thing is you can add addition custom runtime. So I, I brought up Rust. Uh, I think at some point there'll be an out of the box Rust uh, implementation. But for now, I, I think you, you're, um, you'd have to do that as a customer. Okay, that's it for the AWS solution.